Hi everyone, I'm Michael Linderman, pastor of the Lutheran Church of the Redeemer in Ramsey, New Jersey, and vice pastor of Calvary Lutheran Church in Allendale, New Jersey. I'm thinking about preparing for Holy Week. It's Friday, April 3rd, and in two days it's Palm Sunday, and Palm Sunday is the beginning of Holy Week for Christians. We uh, experience um, the, op the, the passion of Christ during this week, and we reflect on that and meditate on that and use it in our worship on Palm Sunday, and then again on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. And then uh, for some churches, including uh, the Lutheran Church of the Redeemer, the Easter Vigil on Saturday evening, and then Easter Sunday morning, the celebration of the resurrection. So these, uh, these days are very holy to Christians around the world. Uh, for Western Christians, uh, we, we have this week now. Uh, for Eastern Christians, uh, they will go through Holy Week next week uh, after we do. And um, it's an opportunity for Christians to really enter into uh, the Christian life and the meditation on the central events of, of our Christian faith, the events around Jesus' uh, uh, arrest, and uh, torture and um, trial, and then his death and, res and resurrection. And uh, so I invite you to enter into this experience. Uh, we're, we, we call this Christ's Passion. It's the week of his passion. Uh, and what we mean by that is that uh, we're entering into Jesus' passion um, by meditation and prayer and worship. Uh, we're not referring to a feeling that Jesus has. The, the, uh, we're not using the word passion in that way. We're talking about Jesus' ordeal. This is the ordeal that Jesus endured during uh, those events in the last week of his life. And so uh, Christians have always seen this as an opportunity to get closer to Jesus' own experience. Um, that's always been a, a, a goal of Christian life to um, more fully understand and, and take into our own life and experience uh, Jesus' own experience. And we do that by meditating on the, the uh, Bible passages that refer to his passion. And so this year we're using the Gospel of Matthew to do that. So I invite you to read through Matthew chapter 26, 27, and 28. Use them all next week uh, to read them. Uh, there are only three short chapters, so it's not that much reading. Uh, read a little bit every day or read them all a few times over the week. And, uh, but remember to do that. This is the, uh, the text for this year is from God, the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, in other years, there's a three-year cycle between Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But this year's uh, version is from Matthew. And we enter into that reading uh, with mindful meditation. So this is your opportunity to um, use your own quiet time that hopefully you've been able to uh, carve out in your daily schedule. Um, many of you do have a little bit more time because you're not commuting to work or unfortunately some of you uh, are not going to work at all now. And um, so we do, um, we may have some extra time and it might be, you might be able to find some extra time this week to do this if you can. Uh, go into a room, close the door, and say for the next 20 minutes or a half hour, I'm going to pray, I'm going to listen to what my heart is saying, uh, what uh, is on my mind that I can hand over to God, and I'm going to meditate on Jesus' passion, this experience that he had, this ordeal that he endured in the last week of his life in order to become more like Christ in our own heart and in our own mind and in our own lives. We can also use other parts of Scripture to help us in this, and so one of the best passages uh, about this experience in general is uh, from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. Uh, so this is the book of Philippians, or the letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, starting with the fifth verse. St. Paul writes, The attitude you should have is the one that Christ Jesus had. He always had the nature of God, but he did not think that by force he should try to become equal with God. Instead of this, of his own free will, he gave up all he had and took the nature of a servant. He became like man and appeared in human likeness. He was humble and walked the path of obedience all the way to death. 
his death on the cross. For this reason God raised him to the highest place above and gave him the name that is greater than any other name. And so, in honor of the name of Jesus, all beings in heaven and on earth and in the world below will fall on their knees, and all will openly proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. These words uh, are not necessarily Paul's own words. We believe that he is quoting here an early creed of the church that was uh, in use at the time, and uh, Paul is quoting it. And it's a way of understanding what Jesus has done in coming um, to be a part of the world and the creation uh, as a human being, and then giving that up in order to um, openly and deliberately endure the experience of human death, and especially Christ's death, uh, which is an innocent death at the hands of people who are not acting in good faith. And so his, enduring, his endurance of that um, is salvific for us. That's the word we use to say that it saves. It has the power to save us, to give us hope, and to um, make us hope in God's salvation. Uh, and the salvation, the picture of that salvation, of course, is the power of Jesus' resurrected life that we experience uh, and that we pray for and that we want to have a foretaste of uh, in our own walk of faith in, in this mortal coil, as we say. And we look forward to that. We celebrate that on Easter Sunday. And we uh, pray for that experience now to be more and more a part of our lives, especially in this time when we are uh, struggling, when many people are suffering, uh, when many people uh, live in fear and anxiety. And um, these uh, gifts of God and the passion of Christ are meant to, to see us through and to carry us even through our own death and into eternal life. May this be a blessing to you all in this holy week.